In this video, we're going to complete example two, which is all about finding the number of time periods using either Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. So we get straight into question A. It says that Pierce would like to save $10,000 for a holiday to Hawaii. He can afford to make repayments of $200 at the end of each fortnight into his bank account. He receives an interest rate of 2% per annum, compounded fortnightly. How long will it take for him to reach his target of $10,000? So this target is our future value, or FV. We're hoping that in the future, we will have $10,000, or Pierce will have $10,000, so that he can go to Hawaii. We've also got an interest rate of 2%, which is compounded fortnightly. To calculate R, we take our percentage, 2, and we need to divide it by 26. This is because there are 26 fortnights in a year. Whenever we calculate R, it has to be written as a decimal, so we also need to divide this by 100. Now, rather than working this out, I'm going to leave it because Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets will work this out for us. We also have a repayment of $200. Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets use PMT to represent our repayment. Now, we need to look at our values here and be careful because sometimes we need to put a negative in front of our value. And our repayments. Are always negative and if you're wondering why let's look at our wallet here which helps us understand this anything that comes out of our wallet any money that comes out of our wallet is negative because it's money that we can't spend and any money that goes into our wallet is positive because that's money we can spend and our repayment PMT of $200 is going to be negative that money is coming out of our wallet and going into the bank account. What about our future value? Should this be positive or should this be negative? When we look at our wallet, it's neither outgoing nor ingoing. That $10,000 was not taken out of our wallet. And that $10,000 is not being put into our wallet right now. But it will eventually be put into our wallet. So it's an ingoing. It's going to be positive. All right, going back to the slide we were at before, we can see our formula up above. We've got our rate, which is a calculation at the moment. We've got our repayment of negative $200. But we don't have a present value. And it doesn't mention a present value in the question. So we'll assume that the present value is zero dollars meaning that Pierce had zero dollars in his bank account to start with all right so we'll bring up Microsoft Excel and we'll pick a cell I'm just picking C9 not not that it matters which cell you pick and I'm going to write the equal sign and we're finding the number of time periods NPER and then open our brackets and you'll notice that you can see the formula there the first thing they want is the rate we haven't actually calculated the rate yet, so we just write in the calculation. 2 forward slash, which means divide, 26, and then we're dividing by 100, so forward slash 100. Comma. Next, we've got to put in our repayment, which is negative $200. Negative 200, comma. We now put in our present value which is zero dollars, zero, comma, and then our future value, $10,000. And finally, comma, we're putting in our type. Now our repayments are going in at the end of the period, which means we put a zero down. Close our brackets and press enter. So it's a little more than 49, let's say 49.08. So if we come back to this screen, for NPER, we got 49.08. So what does this mean? What does 49.08 mean? 
it represents the number of time periods required for Pierce to raise $10,000. Remembering that our time periods are fortnightly. So slightly after 49 fortnights, Pierce will raise $10,000. So when it asks how long will it take for him to reach his target of $10,000, we can say something such as slightly longer than 49 fortnights, or we could go an extra step and convert this to the number of years. We do this by taking our 49.08 and dividing it by the number of fortnights in a year, or 26. This comes to roughly about 1.9 years, so almost two years for Pierce to raise this $10,000. Now looking at question B, Tia has a car loan of $15,600 and is charged an interest rate of 11% per annum compounded monthly. She makes regular repayments of $550 at the end of each month. How long will it take her to pay off the loan? Well, let's look at our formula up above and we'll start with our rate. Our rate is 11%, except we need to remember that it's compounded monthly. So we must divide this by 12 and also divide it by 100 because we always convert our rates into decimals. Remembering that we don't need to work this out yet, Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets will work it out for us. The next thing we're looking here is our repayment or PMT. And our repayment is $550. You'll also notice that it says at the end of the month. That means that our type is going to be zero. Zero for the end of the month, one for the beginning of the month. We also need to calculate our present value. You'll notice in question B that Tia has a car loan of $15,600. This is right at the very beginning, so that's our present value. So we start with a loan of $15,600. We also have FV for future value. Now the question wants to know how long it will take to pay off the loan. Once the loan is paid off, we owe zero dollars. Therefore, our future value must be zero dollars. Now we need to double check if any of these values are negative. Our repayment is going to be negative. Remember that our repayment, which is $550, is negative because it's money that's coming out of our wallet and going into the bank. So we'll write that that's negative. What about our present value? A lot of people read this and go, all right, it's a loan, so surely this amount is negative because loans are negative. But we've got to think about ingoings and outgoings. Now, if you have a loan, meaning you've borrowed money and you've borrowed $15,600. Where does that money go? Well, it's actually an ingoing because technically that money has gone into your wallet. It's come from the bank and has been given to you. So we're going to leave the present value as positive and we're going to leave our repayment as negative. So we'll go to Microsoft Excel now. We're using the formula equals NPER. I'm using cell C11, doesn't matter what cell you use. Open our brackets. The first thing they want is our rate, which we've written over here. It's 11, forward slash for divide, 12, and then divide 100, comma. Next they want our repayment, which is negative, $550, comma. Next, they want our present value, which is $15,600, comma. Our future value is zero, comma. And our type is zero. It's at the end of the period. Close our bracket, 
enter and we get almost 33. Let's round it up to 33. So the number of time periods is approximately 33. We'll use the approximately equal to symbol. Now remembering that our repayments we made monthly. So it's going to take Tia approximately 33 months to pay off this car loan. 33 months. Anyway, that concludes our video on example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.